Well, I was born in Singapore, and how that happened uh, was that my dad and mum separated. My dad is Malaysian, my mum is Singaporean, and my dad was uh, serving the army. He was away a lot, and uh, he was not uh, a very uh, nice, uh, faithful husband. He had his uh, wayward ways, and my mum had enough uh, of that, and she left uh, the family home in KL, not knowing that uh, she had me in her womb. And my dad came back from Vietnam uh, after his army stint, and he found uh, that uh, he only had uh, his uh, mother uh, back at home and the mother said, well, your wife has left you. So he went to uh, Singapore and uh, he said to my mom, uh, you know, why are you leaving me? She said, well, I can't stand you anymore. And then uh, he said, well, give me my daughter. Uh, and that's my older sister um, and her name's Lynette. So she said, yep, you can have your daughter back and your son. And he was surprised. He said, where did he come from, you know? And so dad uh, took me and Lynette uh, back uh, to KL. Um, I was one and my sister Lynette was three. Uh, and we were very poor. Uh, dad uh, didn't make enough money and I don't think he had enough to even give to his mother, let alone his uh, children. Uh, he was also uh, on drugs. Uh, he started at 13 on ganja, marijuana. And uh, he went deeper into it when he became a singer. He had a really, really bad temper. And although he remarried a really wonderful lady uh, who became my stepmom, she was really kind to me and she loved me like her own. And I called her mom. Dad, uh, because of his temper, he was not making life easy uh, for any of us. There were moments where he was even violent uh, towards my stepmom. And uh, I think she also wanted out so many times. of a broken home uh, where children can just go crazy off tangent. I would say that Lynette was just amazing because she was a survivor. She was full of life. Uh, she knew what she wanted and she went for it. She was very, very popular in school, St. Mary's. I remember going for her plays. Uh, and uh, I think that was a, probably an award-winning play that St. Mary's put up, The King and I. And as a brother, I was so proud of her because it was not just a play that she was part of, she was actually the lead. A young lady that's filled with life, energy, uh, self-belief, self-confident. Not easy to find someone like that from a broken home. She just gave her all uh, to uh, everything that uh, she could be a part of in school. In fact, my dad used to say, Lynette, my daughter, is in a school with 20 associations and she's part of 21. She was an amazing sister, she was there for me, she cared for me, you know. Even when uh, she found out there was, there was a girl who liked me across the street, she went out to meet the girl and she said, uh, uh, you know, my Kenny is a really nice boy and she's like promoting me to a girl who already liked me, you know, and my sister thought that she should still uh, say good things about me and then she took the letter from this girl, came back and gave it to me and says, okay, can you read? So Lynette was always there as the amazing uh, older sister. She was just great even as my best friend. In fact, I should say that she was my best friend for all those years we were growing up. I think what happened now that I look back, I can see that Lynette, uh, when she was looking for a boyfriend, she was actually looking for a father's love. And so she got deep into a relationship, too deep in my father's eyes, that he became upset and frustrated, uh, thinking that Lynette could go further than just a normal uh, boy-girl relationship, and he believe that Lynette was actually having intimacy uh, with this young man 
that my father's newfound faith in Christianity and Christ made him uh, feel like he should be a guardian over his family so that his family doesn't sin against the Lord. And he believed that my sister was sinning against the Lord. And so he came down really hard on her. Dad had a newfound faith. I had a newfound faith. Uh, uh, Lynette had a newfound friend that she was enjoying it. And already she felt like dad divorcing with mom had taken away so much from her and from us. And that, you know, he is to be blamed for quite a bit of why mom left. And, She's trying her best and then dad gets married to this second wife which Lynette couldn't get along with and so you know this animosity that was going on nobody is saying anything about it we're just showing our displeasure and you know uh, silence not wanting to fight but wanting to avoid each other a lot of things was going on but then I didn't know everything my dad didn't know everything my sister didn't know everything but yet something deep was really happening and dad came in to my sister's life. He seemed like he was robbing her again of life, of joy, of fulfillment. And so Lynette retaliated. Lynette was just maybe months shy away from her 21st birthday. And my dad actually, uh, at his wit's end, thinking that he was doing a righteous act, took a stick and went up to uh, our room. Uh, my sister and I were sharing a room and he hit her. He thought he could drive the demons out of her. That is the worst thing any parent can do to a 20-year-old. He hit her with a stick and uh, I went in to console her. And I think there, something died. Something already died in her to see the one that should protect her, uh, hit her. If you were to blame, you would say, yeah, dad was wrong, but he also didn't really know what he was doing. He, he, he thought he was doing right. But the temper, his temper got the best of him that day. And I could see that he, was, he really went overboard because I could see the mark on my sister's uh, leg. You know, uh, it, there was a huge line, uh, blue-black. She didn't look like she was angry with dad, but now, if I can remember again the look on her eyes, she was disappointed. And I think really something died within her like, okay, forget it lah, you know. You know, you know how people get into that place? Just just forget it. Just forget it. I, maybe, maybe I don't even have a dad, you know. That drove her to go deeper even uh, with this guy. But because my dad made such, such, such a big fuss, the parents of the guy got involved and said, I think you better break up. And that was really, really painful because as Lynette thought, okay, I'll, I'll just forget that, go with this guy. This guy said to her, I think we should break up. I just believe that my sister's world came crumbling down. We had a call that uh, your sister had been taken by ambulance to uh, the hospital. It was the uh, university hospital and uh, she had attempted to take her life. So we rushed to the hospital and uh, they brought us first to a room where they tried to pump out uh, the poison from her stomach. Uh, so she, they led us first to that room and then she was not in that room because they had rushed her to ICU and uh, so when we got to the ICU, she had all these tubes, you know, going in and through her. Uh, she was, uh, yeah, she was not awake. She was probably by, in coma by then. Uh, and uh, my dad was frantic. Uh, I was, you know, I think I was frantic inside, but I was more sad looking at my sister, my only sister, my best friend, lifeless. And I was like, wow, what's happening? Is she dead? Is she going to die? Uh, of course, you could see on the monitor, her heart was still beating. Uh, but the doctor told us in all truth that it was only beating because they were keeping her uh, alive with uh, the machines. And the doctor said, we will probably have to, after a couple of hours, take off that machine and see whether she can breathe on her own or is she already dead and only the machines are keeping her alive. And so 
you know, doctors and nurses were coming in and out and uh, my dad, I think he couldn't take it so he walked away. I think maybe my dad, probably within him thought, is it my fault, is it my fault? And you know, I think he couldn't bear to be in that room but you know, she was my sister. So I think there were times where I was the only one in that room and, and there were times where I found myself crying, you know, and uh, there was one time I looked up to the ceiling. Uh, I, I was hopefully looking up to God and saying, uh, God, please, please spare my sister. And then it turned from, please spare my sister to, God, please never allow me to ever see another awesome life like this, wasted like this, you know. I was in and out of those two prayers. God, save her, help her, you know, don't let her die. And there was another time where, oh, she's going to die. You know, God, you know, what am I going to do? You know, how, how am I going to live? Uh, what am I going to learn out of this? You know, a lot of thoughts is going through my mind. And so within a day, they, they took out uh, all the tubes and uh, stopped the machine and Lynette didn't survive. So that uh, bed became her deathbed. Yeah. It was really, really, probably one of the toughest days of my life. There was no other time that I felt like my world had come to an end uh, when my best friend, my sister, died that day. Uh, and uh, I felt like I lost a sister, I lost a best friend. We had a dream that we would both be lawyers. And I'm Kenneth, she's Lynette, so it would be KL lawyers. Uh, when she died, uh, even that dream uh, had to go out the window and so it was a very painful time. I don't think I understood probably the, the full uh, magnitude that I myself was going through. Uh, I think growing up, because I didn't have a dad and, and mom, I was very good at hiding my feelings. Uh, and I think this was one of those occasions where I had to hide my feelings to take care of the feelings of others. That day, I, I found myself having to calm my own feelings down, but I was, I was really a mess and I didn't think my future was as bright. I lost my best friend, I lost my sister, I lost Lynette and, uh, and she was just uh, alive a minute. Uh, she was just so full uh, of possibilities. <laughs>